Hi guys, today I'm reviewing the Instant Pot Duo Evo Plus. This is one of the newest models of the Instant Pot. The other new model is the Duo Nova, and if you want to see my review of that, I'll put a link right below this video. That Nova was 8 quarts. This Evo Plus comes in 6 and 8 quarts. I have the 6 quart here. It's 1200 watts, measures 13 inches long, 12.6 inches wide, and 12.8 inches tall. It weighs 13 pounds. The power cord is about 30 inches long. The lid has a sturdy handle. This is the float valve. When it's up, the cooker is pressurized, and when it drops down, all the pressure's been released and it's safe to open the lid. Steam release assembly, the cover and the valve, the pipe. Steam will come out of here when you release pressure and this is supposed to be loose. This is the quick release switch. Move it to seal for pressure cooking and vent for non-pressure cooking and to release pressure. After cooking, you can release pressure using natural release or quick release. With natural release, leave the unit alone after cooking is finished. Pressure releases over time. It could take 10 minutes or longer. You're gonna use natural release when making soups, stews, beans, and grains. With quick release, after cooking's finished, move the release switch from seal to vent and it releases pressure quickly. These are the lid fins. This is the quick cook protective cover. This cover works with a tray that you have to buy separately. Just remove this cover. You'll add ice to the tray and put the tray on the lid. The float valve will drop down 50% faster than if you don't use this. It's similar to cooling down a regular pressure cooker. With regular pressure cookers, you can run cold water over the top of the lid so it cools down faster. You cannot put water on top of the Instant Pot. It's electric, so no water. Close and open are marked on the lid with an arrow on it. Match the arrow to the tab on the pressure cooker. You're gonna hear that little Instant Pot jingle whenever you open or close the lid. If you find the jingle annoying, there is a way to turn it off. I'll show you that in a minute. On the bottom of the lid, there's an anti-block shield. You can pull it off for cleaning. And just pop it back in before using the pressure cooker. That's the locking pin and the silicone cap underneath the float valve. This is the ceiling ring rack that holds the ceiling ring. Just like with the Duo Nova model, you get two ceiling rings. Use one for sweet and one for savory because they do tend to absorb some of the smells from whatever you're cooking. If the rings don't fit properly or wear out, get a new one. A stainless steel rack with handles is included. There are two slots, they're the lid holders. It's convenient so you don't have to look for a place to put down the hot lid. In the back is the condensation collector. There might be some water that collects inside during cooking. You can pull it off and empty it out. Pop it back in when you're done. Here's the stainless steel inner pot that holds six quarts. There are two silicone handles that are new and it's easier to lift out of the base. Older Instant Pot models don't have the handles. Inside the pot there are measurements. There's a half fill line. Don't fill above that for foods that expand when cooking like beans and rice. There's also a max fill line so don't fill above that in general. Another new feature is that you can put this pot on the stovetop. It's tri-ply impact bonded. You can use it on gas, electric, ceramic, and induction stovetops. All the parts can be hand washed or in the top rack of your dishwasher. The base can be wiped down with a damp cloth. It is supposed to be fingerprint resistant. In case you spill something inside, you can wipe it down. Just make sure to dry it really well because the heating element is on the bottom. So this new Instant Pot has a control panel with a large LCD display. It'll show you the cooking time, temperature, pressure, and status. There's a progress indicator here for preheating, cooking, and keep warm. On is gonna be displayed while preheating. Once cooking starts, the time is displayed and it counts down. You've got the dial to go through the programs and just press the middle to choose a program. There are three smart programs using pressure. The pressure cook program, rice grain program, and the bake program. With the bake program, you can use pressure or not use pressure. The pressure cook program has 15 preset options. There's custom, soup, bean, egg, rib, poultry, chili, stew, beef, pork, seafood, broth, sterilized, potato, and broccoli. Let's say we choose poultry. Just select it. The default time is gonna be displayed. 
the time is 10 minutes and the pressure is high. You can always use the dial to increase or decrease the time. And then press the middle, it'll go to the pressure level. You can choose high or low. With the rice grain program, there are eight preset options. There's custom, white rice, oatmeal, quinoa, brown rice, risotto, multigrain, and porridge. So if we choose white rice, the default is 12 minutes and the pressure is low. Again, you can change the time and change the pressure high or low. When you choose the rice grain program, always use natural release. With the bake function, you've got custom, cake, cheesecake, pudding, and proofing. Use the included rack when you're baking and put your own metallic oven safe pan on top of the rack. It's best to cover the pan with foil or a lid. The minimum amount of liquid to use with the six quart is one and a half cups. You can use water, broth, or any other liquid. If you're getting the eight quart model, it's the minimum of two cups. The steam function uses no pressure. There's custom, sterilized, potato, broccoli. With saute, you don't use the lid. There's no pressure. You can set the time for up to an hour and set the temperature to high, low, or custom. If you choose custom, there's LE one through six. That's similar to the settings on your stove top, like low, medium, low, medium, medium, high, etc. So you have a couple of options with the temperature on your saute function. Use the saute function to sear meats, saute your vegetables, and to reduce liquids. When hot is displayed, that means your pot is ready and you can start sauteing. The slow cook program, there's custom, rib, beef, poultry, pork, chili, and stew. There's no pressure. You can set the time and you can choose high or low temperature. That's similar to slow cookers. And the quick release switch should be set to vent. There's a sous vide program. Again, there's no pressure. You cook in vacuum sealed food pouches. There's six presets, beef, poultry, pork, seafood, and egg, and also a custom option. So let's say you choose poultry. You can set the temperature from 77 degrees Fahrenheit to 203 degrees Fahrenheit. There's also a yogurt function. There's no pressure and there are three presets. There's custom, pasteurize, and ferment. The keep warm button. The unit will automatically go into keep warm mode once the pressure cook, slow cook, and rice grain programs end. You can keep food warm for up to 24 hours. Press cancel to stop any program. There's also a delay start button. You could put your ingredients in the pot, choose a program, and set it to start cooking up to 24 hours in advance. Six hours is the default time. You can set it from anywhere between 10 minutes to 24 hours. I did say before that you can turn off the jingle. How you do that is make sure off is displayed. Press and hold the dial for five seconds until the sound icon flashes. Turn the dial to the right. You'll see a circle around the sound icon. Press and hold the dial for another five seconds until the icon stops flashing. Now you've turned the sound off. You can also change the temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius. A safety and maintenance guide is included. It'll give you cleaning tips, and there's also a troubleshooting guide. There's also a getting started guide with a pressure cooking timetable and rice to water ratio. It'll list the ingredients and the time to cook. There's a full manual with details on each cooking program on the Instant Pot website. There are also many recipes on the Instant Pot website in case you're looking for ideas. Also, if you're new to pressure cooking, it helps you figure out how long to cook different foods. When you first get the unit, you have to run a water test, just like in all other Instant Pot models. You only have to do it one time. The pot is in the base. Pour in three cups or 24 ounces of water. Close the lid. The quick release switch should automatically be at seal. Press pressure cook. Custom is gonna flash. Choose that. 
set the time to five minutes and press start. You'll see on is displayed and is preheating. You'll see the bars flashing. When it comes up to pressure, the display will change to the time of five minutes and it'll start counting down. It's come up to pressure, that took eight minutes. Now the progress bar is at cooking and it's gonna count down from five minutes. You can see the red float valve has popped up. Five minutes are up. You can see that it's gone into keep warm mode. Press cancel. Move the quick release to vent. The float valve dropped down. Now we can open the lid. On older model Instant Pots, there was no quick release switch, so this is an improvement. We can discard this water and start cooking. The handles are definitely useful and an improvement because before the handles you had to use oven mitts or a cloth to get the hot pot out of the base. This is definitely much safer. First we'll cook chicken. Pour in one cup of chicken broth. These are chipotle chilies in adobo sauce. They come in the can. I've just chopped up the chilies, two chilies. I'm also gonna use some of the sauce, about two tablespoons, salt, onion powder, garlic powder, half a teaspoon each of the onion powder, salt, and garlic powder, honey, about two tablespoons, and two pounds of chicken thighs. These are bone in. I've removed the skin. Choose pressure cook. Custom. Set the time to 15 minutes and I want high pressure. Press start. The quick release switch should automatically be on seal. You saw the steam coming out and the float valve popped up. Now the display shows 15 minutes and it's going to start counting down. That took about nine minutes. It's finished cooking. I'll press cancel. I'll leave it alone for five minutes and then release pressure. Five minutes are up. Now I can release the pressure. All the pressure's released. Float valve dropped down. Now we can open the lid. Smells really good. I cooked this chicken to use in tacos. You can see the meat just comes right off. It shreds easily. You can use it in many recipes. You can reduce this liquid, take some of it and mix it into the shredded chicken if you want, or save this flavorful liquid for another use, like making rice. It's a little bit spicy, it's very tasty. The chicken's flavorful, it's a little spicy, it's absolutely perfect for making any kind of Mexican dish. You can see the meat just comes right off the bone. Really easy to shred. And the one cup of liquid was enough to cook the two pounds of chicken. So although Instant Pot recommends a minimum of one and a half cups liquid, with certain recipes, one cup of liquid will be enough. There's some liquid from the adobo sauce and the chicken while cooking gives off its own liquid. I really love the handles because I don't have to worry about getting burnt or getting an oven mitt. After you wash the pot, dry it, especially the outside and the bottom. Now I'll make a very simple carrot and cabbage dish. I'll pour in a cup and a half of chicken broth. You can substitute vegetable broth or water. Butter. About three, four tablespoons. Carrots. I cut up about nine medium carrots into two inch long pieces, just cut them in half, and half a head of a large green cabbage. Just cut them into big pieces. It should just fit in here. You see there's the max line. 
This will cook down, of course. And one small onion sliced. Salt, about three quarters of a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of ground black pepper, and dried thyme. Pressure cook. I'll stick with custom. And I'll cook for five minutes on high pressure. It's been 11 minutes and the float valve popped up. Now the display shows five minutes and it's going to start counting down. Generally the valve pops up and then a minute or two later the display will start counting down. Now I'll do a quick release because I don't want the vegetables to overcook. The red float valve dropped down, now we can open the lid. Cabbage is clearly cooked. It smells amazing. Just butter and thyme and salt and pepper and it smells really good. Carrots cooked. You can see there's some liquid on the bottom. It is very flavorful so you can serve it with the vegetables. Really tasty and simple vegetable dish. Most of the carrots stayed in one piece. They didn't fall apart. Some of the smaller pieces did break apart. I set the timer to five minutes. Next time I will do it for four minutes because I think that'll be enough. If you're going to make this dish, I forgot to tell you to add a splash of apple cider vinegar. I think it'll taste even better. This tastes very similar to a steamed cabbage and carrots that you might get at a Jamaican restaurant. I hope you give this recipe a try and the chicken also. They're both very tasty and easy to make. Let me know how you like them in the comments below. If I do any more recipes with this Instant Pot, I'll put a link to those videos right below this one. I haven't baked anything with the Instant Pot yet, so I will try to put up a video on the bake function. As you saw, this Instant Pot Duo Evo Plus is even easier to use than the other models because of all the improvements. I love that there are handles on the stainless steel pot. You can even use it as a regular pot on the stove. There's a slot to put the hot lid. The LCD display is very clear and gives you lots of information as to what's going on when you're cooking. There are a lot of presets, a lot of options, including the new sous vide button. If you don't already have an Instant Pot and are looking to get one, I would definitely suggest this Duo Evo Plus 6 quart. It has the most features and is really easy to use. If you want to try out this Evo Plus, I put a link in the description below. As always, I hope you found this review helpful and that you liked the recipes. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more reviews.